With Trump sweeping toss-up states' polls across the nation and even winning in national polling averages, the question on many of our minds is: What exactly is Trump's ceiling? With Trump beating Biden on average by one percent in nationwide polling compared to Biden's seven percent lead in 2020, it is a fair question. Especially when you realize that Biden is doing eight percent worse nationally right now than he was in 2020. In our recent video, we look at what Biden's best case scenario is for this election, and so in this video, we are going to see just exactly what the best case scenario is for Donald Trump. Specifically, in this video, we'll break down what would happen if Trump is able to beat his current polling by five percent. This would be a big jump, and while for Biden this probably wouldn't be possible. For Trump, he has a track record of beating his polling odds by big numbers. Before we proceed, please subscribe to the channel and help us get to 10k subs. All right, now let's head to the map. First, we are going to look at the states that are safe for Joe Biden, even factoring in the hypothetical Trump overperformance. These are the states where, in our scenario, Joe Biden will win with a margin greater than 9%. First up is the District of Columbia. Not surprisingly, DC is safe for Joe Biden. Not only is it an urban population. But it voted for Biden with an 85% margin in 2020. We don't have any polling data for DC so far, but if Trump outperformed by 5%, Biden would still crush him with an 80% margin in the 2024 election. Next is Hawaii. I feel like Hawaii could begin to drift closer toward likely D due to Biden's unpopular handling of the Hawaii fires. If Trump increases his polling numbers by 5%, it could place him losing the state by only 31%. Next is the home of Bernie Sanders, Vermont. Vermont, in our scenario, with a 5% Trump overperformance, would have Donald still losing by 33% to Joe Biden in 2024. Maryland is another safe D state, and in our scenario, even with Trump's bonus, Joe Biden would stand to win by 18%. Interestingly, this election could be one where the state gets a Republican senator but supports Joe Biden for president. In California, if Trump increased his polling numbers by 5%, it could make a big dent in down ballot congressional races. Not to mention the national popular vote for the president. In our scenario, Trump would lose by 16 percent against Joe Biden, which would be the best performance by a Republican in 20 years. In Joe Biden's home state of Delaware, this scenario would have Trump end up losing for Joe Biden by almost 18 percent. In New Jersey, Biden is currently pulling at 21 percent. However, in our scenario, the state could be won by Joe Biden with a commanding 16 percent of the vote. Similarly, in Massachusetts, polls show Trump losing by 20 percent, but a 5 percent increase for Trump could put him losing the state by only 15 percent. Next is Rhode Island, currently in America's smallest state. Trump is losing by 17 percent, and a 5 percent bonus wouldn't be much help, only bringing his margin of loss down to 12 percent. Our Democratic safe states give Joe Biden 106 electoral votes. If Biden getting a 9 percent margin of victory or higher in the state makes it a safe state. Then in the real 2020 results, this means Joe Biden ended up getting 212 electoral votes from safe states, which means in this hypothetical, he is down by a huge 106 electoral votes. Moving on to our safe Republican states, first up is Salt Red Wyoming, where Trump won in landslide in 2020, with a 5% increase for Trump. He could win Wyoming by an incredible 58% of the vote later this year. Next is the coal capital of America, West Virginia. Trump is already pulling incredibly well in this once Democrat stronghold, and is currently pulling at a 36% margin, which could place Trump winning a 41% vote margin. In North Dakota, Trump is currently pulling with a 37% margin, which would have Trump crushing Joe Biden with a 42% margin. In Oklahoma, Trump is currently getting a 28% vote margin in Oklahoma based on current polls, and if he outperformed at a 5% rate, he would get a 33% margin this November. In Tennessee, Trump is currently winning with a 33% margin in the polls, and a 5% bonus could see Trump win a landslide with 38% of the vote. In Idaho, Trump is currently pulling with a 29% margin, and if the 5% bonus is factored in, this margin goes up to 34%. In South Dakota, the election polls are saying that Trump will get 29% more votes than Joe Biden, and with a 5% bonus, Trump could stand to get a 34% margin over Biden. In Kentucky. Polls suggest that Trump is beating Biden by 29 points, and in our scenario, this would increase to an even bigger Trump win of 34%. In Arkansas, Trump is up 33%, and with his 5% bonus, this would place him at a 38% margin of victory. In Montana, 
things are shaping up in a lot differently than in past elections. You may remember that in 2020, polling averages had Montana as a lean or likely Republican state, and their averages shows Trump barely winning by around 5%. However, currently Trump is up by incredible 21.5% in Montana, and a 5% bonus would have him winning the state by 26.5%. And this could help carry the close Senate race in the state for the Republicans. In Missouri, Trump is in the lead with a 17% vote margin in this one-time swing state. In our scenario, Trump will win by 22%. Indiana, another former swing state, actually voted for Joe Biden for vice president in 2008. But today in our scenario, Trump crushes the current president with a 25% vote margin. Turning to the Deep South. In Alabama, Trump's 5% bonus would give him a 25% margin of victory in this election. In Nebraska, Trump's 5% edge would give him a 21% margin of victory. Nebraska is a state that is critical to do well in because they allow each of their congressional districts to use their electoral votes for whoever their districts votes for. We will take a look at Nebraska's 2nd district in a little bit. Utah is a state that has been somewhat Trump-averse, though even more Democrat-averse. If Trump beat the polls by 5%, an election in the Beehive state would have Biden losing by 18%. In South Carolina, polling data has Trump up 16 points over Biden, and in this hypothetical, that could mean a 21% victory for the former president. In Kansas, Trump has a 15% lead over Joe Biden, which would place Trump beating Joe by 20% in our scenario. In another former Obama state, Iowa, Trump is currently leading by 11.5%. With a 5% bonus, this could look like a 16.5% margin of victory for Trump. In Mississippi, Trump is up 18 points over Biden, and a 5% bonus could put Trump with a 23% lead on election day. The once iconic swing state of Ohio is a state where right now Trump has a commanding 10% lead over Biden. In our scenario, this would mean a 15% margin of victory for Trump and probably the end of an era for Ohio as a swing state. Alaska is another state where polls show Trump barely winning, and then on election day, Trump pulled out a solid win with a 10% margin of victory in Alaska. With his current 12% polling margin, berating this number by 5%, Trump could be looking at a huge 17-point victory in the last frontier. Louisiana is another state where Trump is polling with big margins, 15% to be exact. In our scenario, that 5% buffer could place Trump winning 60% to 40%, making for a landslide election in the bayou. Texas was thought to be a swing state in both 2016 and 2020, but in both of those cases, Trump proved the polls wrong, and in 2020, Trump won with a respectable 5.5% vote margin. In our hypothetical, Trump's current polling margin of 8.8% could transform into a 13.8% vote margin in November, effectively taking Texas back for Republicans and out of swing state status. In Maine's 2nd District, Trump outperformed the polls by 7.5%, and Trump is currently beating Biden there in the polls by an incredible 17%. That would mean in our scenario, Trump will win with an amazing 22% margin in this key district. In North Carolina, in this scenario, would be a safe state for the Trump campaign. Based on Trump getting a 5% margin of victory in the polls right now, Trump would get an even bigger margin of victory at 9.6%, a huge turnaround from the close election just 4 years ago. Lastly, in the Copper State, Trump is currently beating Joe Biden by a 4.5% margin, which could position Arizona to return to the Republican Party and give Trump a 9.5% margin of victory over Joe Biden in our scenario, taking Arizona all the way back to the glory days of the Republican Party, counting on AZ in every election. As you can tell, Trump has way more safe states than Joe Biden has, though Democratic safe states tend to have more electoral votes. Either way, these safe states get Biden a whopping 216 electoral votes. This number is very high, and it puts Trump just 54 electoral votes away from winning the presidency. Many of these states like Alaska, Montana, and Texas were states once thought to be competitive for the Democrats, but are not shaping up to be that way in this cycle. Up next is our likely D states. These are states where Biden would get a victory margin between 5 and 9%. First up is a shocker, Connecticut. If Trump outperforms by 5% in Connecticut, it would turn the current polls of 11% into an actual 6% vote margin. This would be the best performance by the Republican since 1988. Next is Oregon, where Trump is losing to Biden by 13%, and could give Biden a narrow 54% to 46% victory in the specific Northwest state. In Illinois, 
in this hypothetical, Biden would beat Trump with only 5.75% of the vote. This would be a huge embarrassment for the Biden campaign to win solid blue Illinois by such a small margin. In Maine, Trump is currently losing by an 11% margin. If he outperformed here by 5%, he would lose the state by just 6%. In Washington state, Trump is losing with a 10% margin in the polls, and a 5% bonus could bring this down to a mere 5% loss overall, and could pull some swing congressional districts in Washington over to the Republican side. Lastly, it may be one of the most surprising states on this list, New York. Trump is currently losing in New York polls by 12%, but a 5% buffer would place him losing by only 7% in his home state, which would make it the closest presidential election in New York since 1988. These states in total add up to 77 electoral votes for the Democrats, and every single one of them would have been a safe state for Joe Biden in 2020. For the likely Republican states, there are five total, but these five should make Democrats nervous. Because these five states are all 2020 swing states. Up first is Florida, which has been trending more and more conservative, and right now the state doesn't even have a single Democrat elected to a statewide office. Right now, it looks like Trump is pulling at a 6% margin of victory in this state. And with a 5% bonus, this would place him winning the state with an 11% margin of victory. Next is Wisconsin, where Trump is ahead by just 0.6% point. And the 5% bonus would give him a 5.6% win in Wisconsin and give the Republicans a critical flip in this race. In Georgia, Trump is winning by 3.8% over Joe Biden, but if he overperformed by 5%, this would take Georgia to safe R status with an 8.8% victory over Joe Biden. In Michigan, Trump is beating Joe Biden in the polls by 2.8% and in this scenario, Trump would win with a 7.8% in the polls. This would be a devastating loss for Joe Biden who won the state in 2020. The last one in the likely Republican category is Nevada, which has not voted Republican since 2004. But right now, the state's polling numbers are giving Trump a 3.2% advantage over Biden. With a 5% bonus, Trump will get an 8.2% margin on election day, bringing the state from a likely D position in 2020 to a likely R spot in 2024. These states add up to 77 electoral votes for Donald Trump, and if you are counting, these likely states combined with Trump's solid Republican states would be enough to put him into the White House with 293 electoral votes. Next up is our lean D states. These are states where Joe Biden will win in our scenario by less than 5%. First is New Hampshire, where if Trump beat the polls by 5%, he could end up losing the state by only 3%, a big gain from his 7% loss in 2020. In New Mexico, Trump is losing by 8%, and a 5% buffer would actually place Trump barely losing the state by 2%. If this happened, I would look for New Mexico to follow Nevada in a rightward drift over the next few cycles. In Colorado, Biden is winning by 6.5% and a 5-point adjustment in favor of Trump would put this state within striking distance for the former president with a tiny 1.5% loss. These states represent 19 electoral votes and Democrats can't afford to lose any of them if they are going to keep Trump out of the White House. Sadly for Democrats, Republicans don't actually need to win any of the states in the lean R column to win this election and to make matters worse. Four of them are traditionally Democratic states. If this is the outcome of this November, Democratic Party staffers should prepare to resign. First up is Pennsylvania, where Joe Biden is pulling at 0.1% over Trump, but a 5-point bonus would give Trump a sizable 4.9% win over Biden and all of the state's 19 electoral votes. The next one is a slight surprise, Virginia, which has a Republican governor but hasn't voted for a Republican for president since 2004. If Trump overperformed here by 5%, Trump would turn the current polls from a 4.3% loss to a 0.7% win for Trump. This would be a huge win for Republicans, and this would be the first time a Republican won the state since 2004. In Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, there is no polling data available for the district, but the Cook Political Report places this race as likely D, and CNN has them rated as a toss-up. If Donald Trump got a 5% bonus in this district, it could dramatically shift this race. So for argument's sake, we will put Nebraska's 2nd Congressional Districts in the lean Republican column. Lastly is Minnesota, where polls have Trump losing by 3%. Our estimations would place him at a narrow win of only 2% in his longtime Democratic state. 
Minnesota hasn't voted for a Republican for president in 52 years, and this would be a new era in the state's politics, and I could see Minnesota truly emerge as a Wisconsin-style swing state. These three states and Nebraska's 2nd district add to 43 electoral votes for Trump. If the polls are underestimating Trump by 5% in every state, the Democrats are in for their biggest defeat in 36 years and Trump will win the popular vote for the first time and win the Electoral College 336 to 202. Current polls have Trump winning the popular vote by 1.7%, and if he outperforms these by 5%, the election results could be 54% to 46% nationally, which would be the biggest popular vote margin for a Republican since 1988. So what do you think? Is this Trump's best case scenario, or can he do even better? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers.